Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie and I am with the Beaverton City Library. Normally I work at the Murray Schultz branch, but today I'm at home and I'm going to share with you a STEM activity that you can do at home with, suppli with supplies that you probably have at home. So just a reminder, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And today's challenge is, any way the wind blows, make a windsock that can tell the direction and relative speed of the wind. Hmm. It's been pretty windy here lately when I'm recording this, so I thought it would be a good project. So your supplies that you'll need. First, we have cardstock or heavy paper. Um, it lists crepe paper streamers, but I personally don't have crepe paper streamers at home. If you have them, awesome. But I thought that ribbons sort of lightweight ribbons like these might be a good replacement. Also asks for twine. You might find twine in your kitchen. You might use it for crafting, or if not, dental floss is something else you could use. I've got some paper clips. Doo, doo, doo. And tape or glue. Ah. As well as a hole punch. And this is a hole punch that I grabbed at the library when we were still open, but normally I don't have a hole punch. So if I were doing this project with my own personal supplies, I would probably use this awl that I use for crafting. It has a very sharp point and it's made for making holes in things. Um, but if you don't have a hole puncher, if you don't have an awl, just think about what you have at home that could sort of like punch a hole in something, maybe your ribbons or your crepe paper streamers. All right, now it's about the time that you want to go grab your supplies. And if you're back, I have a hint for you. It says, your windsock needs a base as well as a part that can move in the wind. Hmm. So think about how you're going to design a base and then the piece that sort of moves in the wind. What's going on? What's the science behind this? The direction and speed of the wind plus clouds and other clues help meteorologists predict the weather. It is easy to tell the wind direction with a wind sock. If the wind sock is pointing south, then the wind is coming from the north, exactly. A wind sock can also tell the relative speed of the wind. If it is not windy, the wind sock will hang without moving. In a low wind, it will droop or sort of like make gentle movements. And if the wind is very high, then the wind sock will fly horizontally. As always, I have a few extension activities for you to go with this project. And the first one, S is for science. Why is it important to know what the weather is and how does it affect your life? So for me, I check the weather pretty regularly. Um, when I go out running, I wanna know what I should be wearing. If I wanna be wearing um, my leggings or if I wanna wear shorts, if I need to wear a jacket or a hat. Um, if it's really, really hot, should I be carrying water? Also, when I walk to work, I wanna know what kind of shoes should I be wearing? If it's raining, I tend to wear like a heavier shoe. Um, and I want to know if I need to wear a jacket and what kind of jacket I could wear. T for technology. Meteorologists use many tools to predict the weather. What are some other weather tools that you could create? E for engineering. Your windsock needs to hang outside. It's not going to be much wind inside. How can you improve the design so that it works in all kinds of weather? Crepe paper streamers, those are made out of paper. And if that's hanging out in the wind and the rain, it's gonna get wet and probably fall apart in pieces. So think about um, different materials you can use and also where you want to hang your windsock. A for art, Children's Day in Japan is often celebrated by flying carp wind socks. Look at examples and make your own version. So I was just able to use Google and type in carp wind socks. Carp is a kind of fish. 
and I was able to see photos. Also, if you go grocery shopping at Uwajamaya, uh, they have Carp One socks out in their um, parking lot. So all you have to do is look up. Finally, M for math. For 10 days, record the speed and direction of the wind and the weather at the time. Graph it, and then think about what you learned. I've got some example, some sample graphs for you. So I only did five days, and this is just an example. These are not real weather readings. Weather readings, Monday through Friday at noon. And that time is important because you wanna do it at the same time every day, because otherwise you cannot compare your information um, well. So first I have wind, and I marked that I measured it in uh, miles per hour. You could also just make hash marks to say, um, what were those three things? Not windy, low wind, or high wind. You can also do those as three hash marks instead. And then I also marked the direction that the wind was coming from. Over here I have temperature, and again, Monday through Friday, also at noon. And you might notice I've got this squiggly line at the bottom of the graph. Do, do, do. There it is. So that just means I don't need to see 0 through 40 because we didn't have temperature readings for 0 through 40. So that squiggly line just means there's extra like information in there, but like we don't we didn't we didn't need to use it. Um sky, I just did a little reading. Monday was partly cloudy, Tuesday was partly cloudy, Wednesday was mostly sunny, Thursday raining, Friday raining. A few other things you could measure are humidity, precipitation collected, pressure, and dew point. Just remember you want to do all of these at the same time or anything that you do record, you want to do them at the same time. And for these, or maybe for temperature, if you have a digital weather station at home, like one of those digital readings, um, some of these things, some or all of these things are included on that digital reading. All right. That is your STEM activity, and thank you for joining us. Bye.